بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين ولعنة الله على أدائهم أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد We are on chapter 11 which is responsibility 11 absolute obedience to the Imam We are in the book The Last Luminary and Ways to Delve into the Light Practical Responsibilities of the Believers to the Twelfth Imam by Sayyid Ridha Hosseini Mutlaq. So the author, he says, another responsibility of the believers is to obey the Imam during the time of his advent and also during his occultation. Obeying him means that we must adhere to the legislations sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are to obey Allah wa Rasul wa ulul amr minkum. Obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in charge of authority amongst you. That we know from narrations is referring to Ahlul Bayt alayhimussalam. And we're commanded to obey them and their obedience is linked to the obedience of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Rasulullah's obedience is linked to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to obey them, first of all, we have to know them. We have to know about them. And to obey uh, them, we need to know the ahkam. We need to know their akhlaq. We need to know uh, how they lived in order to obey them. We have to know their commandments in order to follow them. And the only way to do that is to seek knowledge. We have to read about them. We have to learn about them. We have to ask questions about them. And if we're true followers of someone, we need to study them and follow them. If we claim to love them, then we need to adhere to them. And the only way, as I said, to adhere to their commandments is to know their commandments. The only way to know their commandments is to take the time out of our busy schedules and learn about them, inshallah. He says, during the period of the occultation, obeying the Imam can be achieved by the following commandments of his noble ancestors, which are found in the books of narrations. Imam Sajjad salam says, There is no honor except by being uh, God, God-weary, or following uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having taqwa. And there is no action except when accompanied by the correct intention. There is no worship except with contemplation. Surely the most hated of people in the sight of Allah is the one who follows the tradition of the Imam, however does not follow him in his actions. So we see here that the honor of a person is not in where he is from or what his ethnicity is or what anything else, what status he has, or what money he has, or what job he has, or so on and so forth. The status of the person, the honor of a person, is with taqwa. La karama illa bi taqwa. There is no honor except with taqwa. Then there is no action except accompanied by the correct intentions. We have to have good intentions behind our actions and not do them for the wrong reasons. We have to do them for the right reasons. Qurbatan Allah to seek closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no worship except without except with contemplation. We have to think about the things that we are doing. We have to Think about why we are praying, why we are fasting. We have to have good intention and also contemplate the reasons why we are doing these things. When we read books, we have to contemplate how to enact those things that we read in those books. How to live according to those narrations that we are uh, reading. The second narration he quotes is, Be a beautification for us, Ahlul Bayt, salam, and not a source of embarrassment to us. This is very important. We have to honor the Ahlul Bayt. We're followers of Ahlul Bayt, the most noble of Allah's creation. Therefore, we should honor them we should, by being good Shia. We have to ask ourselves on a continuous basis, uh, is what, um, what we're doing pleasing to our Imam? If our Imam was here with us, would he be pleased with us? Would we be, he be pleased with how we're living our life? Would he be pleased with how we're acting on social media? Would he be pleased on how we treat our guests? 
how we treat our friends, how we treat our family. Would he be pleased on how we keep up with the commandments that we are commanded to do, such as our salat, our fasting, our uh, studying, and so on and so forth. So we have to be an adornment for them and not an embarrassment for them. And we have to do some self-reflection with this and ask ourselves sincerely, which category are we in? In a final tradition for this responsibility, we quote the words of the sixth Imam, Ja'far ibn Muhammad as-Sadiq alayhi salam, who says, Indeed, we do not classify a person as a true believer until he follows all of our teachings. Certainly, piety is attained by following our teachings, so beautify yourselves with it. May Allah have mercy upon you and hurt our enemies with it, and Allah will enliven your spirits. So we see that to be a true follower of Ahlul Bayt, we have to follow their teachings and implement their teachings. This comes through ma'rafa of our Imam, knowing our Imam, and through studying their words and their actions and trying to live according to a way that would please our Imam and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and please Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala. So may Allah help us in implementing the teachings of Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam in our lives and make us good and true servants of Imam Zaman ajallah ta'ala farajahu sharif Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala muhammad